On this hunt, I'm headed into the oven of late summer New Mexico to chase antelope with my buddy Cody Lujan, a man whose ancestry in this region goes back to the time of the conquistadors. You can't just be flinging bullets off those edges like that. I'm Steven Ronella. To me, hunting isn't only about the pursuit of an animal. It's about who we are and what we're made of. I live to hunt and hunt to live. I am a meat eater. Two miles? Yeah, easy. But that's what I like if you can see him from two miles away. Let's bump up, keep an eye on him. It's late August, and I'm in the far northeast corner of New Mexico, where the Rocky Mountains fade downward into the massive interior American plains. My hunting partner, Cody Lujan, and I are on a private cattle ranch in search of antelope, or American pronghorn. Antelope are the second fastest land animal on the planet, next only to African cheetahs, far faster than any of their natural predators. They have incredible eyesight, and they are the only horned animal to shed their horn. They are a little bit bizarre and a lot beautiful. What I love about these New Mexico antelope is the they're really territorial here. We'll find them, even if we bump a big buck out of a spot, you can come back in the next morning, and uh, majority of the time, they're right back where you left them. It's interesting how like-minded people find each other. Cody and I met through a mutual friend and immediately knew we needed to go hunting together. He has a deep personal and familial history in some of Western America's most rugged and iconic places, and he has a hunting resume to rival the best of them. He's a real meat eater and hunts with respect, reverence, and confidence. Neither of us being big on truck hunting, we parked on the edge of a large pasture and set out with enough water for the day. I don't see him yet. Oh, there he is. He just popped out. As we approach the first buck, I tell Cody he's got to take the first shot. After all, this is his spot. This buck looked like a dandy buck. We're going to go check it out, but we're kind of not really feeling it yet but you might start feeling it real quick. I know? might pop over that top and really <laughs> feel it. Yeah, but, it feels know. right, we'll do it. If not, we'll go till it feels right. Someone was just telling me, don't pass one up on the first day that you'd be happy to have on the last day. I think those are wise words of wisdom, uh, always. We timed our hunt to catch the rut, a time when bucks are busy prowling the plains for females. They're so desperate for companionship that they'll actually approach humans in hopes of finding love. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on, down, 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 down. Like this buck, who's coming in to check us out in hopes of getting lucky. Just sitting on here and waiting. At this distance, the buck can't rule out that we might be a band of females. He hasn't done that leg stomp yet or flared his hairs on his back end, so he's not spooked. You'll see as this guy spooks, he'll flare all the hair on his rump out. And when they flare that stuff out, they actually emit like a pheromone that other antelope can smell a mile away. The smell of these bucks, this is gonna sound weird, but these bucks smell like Frito-Lay corn chips. It's the weirdest thing, man. He's definitely looking for company, Steve. He has no idea what we are. He's got his rump flared. Is he a little spooked now? Yeah. If you're going to shoot him, you, I would do it. I don't know, man. I'm just not feeling it. <laughs> He's getting all majestic now, man. What do you say, Steve? Let's go look at some more. Yeah. 
Despite being a private ranch, this environment is not entirely easy to hunt. Midday temperatures here are approaching 100 degrees. And aside from an extinct volcano on the edge of the property, it is almost entirely flat, with no shade and very little topography that one can use to conceal himself. I've done a fair bit of antelope hunting, but always on open access ground where there's always a ton of pressure from other hunters. There, you never get the sense that they are behaving normally. And while I always take pride in doing public land hunts, I couldn't turn down the opportunity to hunt a patch of private ground where the antelope act like antelope. So I can hardly believe it when we see another buck walking straight towards us, something that would seldom happen on heavily hunted open access ground. It's three and 10, you're all right. I'll take a look at him through the scope. It's a, it's a good buck, man. It's a real nice buck. Good hit, man. That's wild, these lone bucks just like see that movement and they just come. Like you see it with caribou a lot, you know, they'll see you and they'll think you might be caribou. But man, I've never seen an antelope that were so like just unmessed with that they're like, the assumption is it might be other antelope. Right. And you know what that is to me? That, that assumption of other antelope, that is wildness. These animals aren't harassed, they're not pushed, they're not, they don't know what humans are, you know, and that, I think that's a testament to this place that we're on right now. These are wild, these animals are really wild. If you just kind of give me a sec. Yeah, yeah. Come on. One thing I appreciate about Cody is his almost spiritual connection to the animals he hunts. He conveys a sense of honesty and reverence and curiosity, almost a sort of mysticism. <sighs> All right. I'm really, really grateful to this animal, man. This is gonna feed my family. It's mid-afternoon and hot as hell. We need to get this meat cooled down immediately, and we have a long walk back to Cody's rig. thing about hunting with a local is getting the opportunity to sample local cuisine. And as it turns out, Cody's father, Harold, has offered to whip us up a batch of his red chili antelope tacos when we get back to the ranch. So does your old man just kind of roll around ready for whatever? He's on the go. We're within a couple hours striking distance from where he happened to be fishing. Always ready to make some margaritas and he, tacos. You don't care when he gets in? Absolutely not. As long as he's a part of anybody's hunting or fishing camp, he's happy to be there, man. What's up? Hey, Steve. I appreciate you agreeing to get all squared away. This is a professional looking outfit you got going on here. We're gonna make some antelope tacos? Yeah. Yeah. Now, in New Mexico, everybody cooks their own style, but this is this traditional style my mom taught me. This is New Mexico red chili. Now, the key to New Mexico red chili is the chili that's grown on the Rio Grande. The chili is not that it's so hot. It's the flavor. Watching Harold cook, I know I'm in for a treat. 
First, he browns the fresh antelope loin in oil, then adds in some flour as a root. Then comes the chili. This is coming out pretty good, actually. I don't know if it's going to taste any good, but it looks you good. like the way it looks, though, at least. Mm -hmm. OK, try that now. It's got like a subtle taste to it, you know what I mean? It's not like overpowering, man. That's the whole idea. Yeah, That's yeah. what we go for. Is yeah. the That's the whole idea. It's, it's not yeah, so Yeah, it's not just like, like super hot, you know? No, that's, you're not, you're not, the whole thing is not to see who's got the hottest chili. Oh, it looks so pretty. Antelope tacos. Ma'am. That's the real deal, man. Thank you. My pleasure. One of the things I enjoy is, is cooking the traditional New Mexico food. Not bad, huh? It's phenomenal. I mean, if I say so myself, you know what I mean? Thanks, Dad. You bet. My pleasure. First thing in the morning, we're out on the plains again. It's my turn to get a buck, and I'm hoping for a nice, mature animal. There's a property boundary right here. There's a lot of antelope action across that boundary, but they seem to move back and forth a fair bit. So we're going to come up and glass all this stuff, maybe camp out on some high spots for a while, and see what we can pick up moving around. It doesn't take long to spot one. They're all over the place. But we're headed toward the sun on open ground, ideal conditions for getting busted. So we decide to swing a wide loop and approach him from a different direction. First buck we saw cut around on us. Now here he is walking across this plat. I guarantee we could make it up that up that fence line. Mm -hmm. Knock off a couple hundred yards. If I wanted to do that shot right now, you know he's on that skyline. And there's a railroad track and cattle and Lord knows what behind him. He can't just be flinging bullets off those edges like that. I decide to move along the fence to see if I can get a better angle on him while Cody hangs back to keep the movement at a minimum. As I get up to the fence, I can tell that the landscape is just not on my side. I cross over to see if I can get a better angle, but it still doesn't look good. When I was talking about not taking that shot, I wasn't even aware of that, but look at the line of houses, farmyard. Well, that's a good way to waste the best part of your last day. Dude, what happened? Could have shot a box of shells at him, but every shot I had, he was just like right on the horizon. Damn. He was always like, you know, can't take that shot now. Just like perfect. But it's like he never got a backdrop. Well, that's good that you didn't take the shot. It's disappointing, but when you're hunting, you have to consider the consequences of your actions. With this flat ground, that bullet can go a long way to places unknown. 
Besides, we've got all day and there will be other opportunities. Sure enough, around midday, we spot another buck. We track him at a safe distance for a while until he beds down on the opposite side of a rise and beyond a herd of cattle, giving us the perfect cover in case the buck stands up and comes back over the rise and into view. When the cows scatter, we're exposed, unless the buck stays bedded. I trust my luck and hope that he will, and I keep moving forward. Batted down. I'm on his way here. Again, Cody stays back as I carefully make my approach. I've got his position marked according to a lone tree, so I plan my stalk using that as a guide. Once I'm close enough that the buck might glimpse me coming over the crest, I start to crawl on all fours. The buck is still bedded, oblivious to the threat. Some folks look down on shooting bedded animals as though it's somehow unethical. I say that approaching a bedded animal is the result of a skilled stalk and the situation should be honored as such. You earn the moment, you keep it. It's a dandy, a beautiful, beautiful animal. Man, thanks for tromping around with me, man. Hey, thanks for tromping around with me and sharing the hunt with me. I really, really had a hell of a time. As I start to gut him, Cody heads off to get the truck. It's still well over 90 degrees out here, so it's imperative that we get this animal out of the sun before he starts to spoil. Not gonna lie, Steve, I had the AC blasting. You should have left it off in an act of solidarity. <laughs> With the trip drawing to a close, Cody offers to cook up a camp version of one of his favorite dishes, antelope with roasted chilies and blue cheese. So that's the genuine hatch chili right this there. This is the, the real McCoy here, or the real Sanchez, whatever you want to call it. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is it right here, man. So what is Hatch, a town? Hatch is a town in southern New Mexico, right on the banks of the Rio Grande River. And, you know, like everybody down there is growing chilies. Everybody's growing chilies, man. It's a big deal. They have a big festival. And, uh, you know, it's got to be certified hatch green chili. It's the most sought after copied chili peppers that you can pretty much find. I think they're great. And we eat green chili down here on everything. This is just as important to us as our fish and meat. I kind of like the mild, medium flavor, like my dad likes. We kind of go for the flavor. Yeah. A little bit, of, little bit of spice to it, but some good flavor. I'm going to smack these out. OK. That's looking good. You gotta love a guy who wanders around with a travel-sized spice kit. You can see New Mexico, some common threads here. Garlic, chili. So 
Well, let's say a guy doesn't have access to the Hatch Valley. Where, how does he go about getting himself a... Um... Go online and actually, they'll ship it. They'll roast it, put it on ice, and overnight it to you. Really? Yeah. Let's grab a couple of plates. That oh, looks pretty enough, man. I've never been shy about my belief that hunters have the potential to eat better than anyone else because we own our ingredients through a pact that's been written into the dirt and blood. We earn them by applying our skills through hard work and determination, and we use them by honoring the traditions and lessons left by those ahead of us. The details of these traditions are hardly as important as the simple fact of honoring the traditions themselves. The key to eating game well isn't so much the fine details. It's not whether you've got hatch chilies and blue cheese or just a can full of cream of mushroom soup poured over a crock pot of squirrels. Instead, it comes down to approaching the meal with gratitude and respect. That is what makes a meal truly memorable.